This is the Digital Savage Experience Podcast, hosted by Roman Prokopchuk, bringing you all things digital marketing, tech, business, and motivation. What's stopping you from becoming relentless in all aspects of life? Are you ready to become a digital savage? Let's get into today's episode. Hey everyone, this is Roman Pokopchuk, and this is the Digital Savage Experience Podcast. Today I have with me Roman Miranov. Roman is a relationship coach from Toronto, Canada. Thank you for joining me today. My pleasure, Roman. Thanks for having me. Glad to have you on. So tell me a little bit about your journey. How did you get to where you are today? Uh, well, uh, I guess there are two components to it. The first one is uh, actually... I moved to Canada last year, so I've been here just for one year and all my previous life I lived in in Russia. And at one point, it was back in 2002, I went to Alaska to work during summer and I loved it. Since then, you know, I've been really a fan of the English language, of the North American culture, of the whole atmosphere. So it's been my really lifelong dream to, you know, to live here one day. So last year, this dream came true. So yeah, that's, that's one part of my journey. And the second part is that I, I used to be a translator, a professional translator working from English and German into Russian. And I did that for 14 years. And when I moved to Canada, I switched to a completely new career becoming a relationship coach and one reason i did that is that i i had gone through a painful divorce with my ex-wife we had been together for 11 years and then it ended abruptly and that was painful experience one reason was that um, it was so painful was that because I wanted a new relationship, but I, I didn't know anything about women back then. And it was almost six years ago because she sort of, you know, fell into my lap back uh, when we had met each other. So I, I didn't really, I hadn't known anything about women back then. So after my divorce, I had to go through the entire process of learning women, learning dating, learning relationships, you know, testing basically every tip that's out there on myself. So I, cu- I accumulated all this knowledge and I also saw people struggling with this, with this a lot. And I wanted to use this knowledge. And since I've also been a fan of self-improvement and I love helping people, I just combined these two things together. And yeah, I went through training and now I am a coach happily. No, that's awesome. Yeah, I was going to say your English is very uh, good for being a, uh in Canada for a year. But um, yeah, I think uh, the the thing about kind of relationships or finding a new relationship or kind of overcoming, you know, an old tough one, it's like relearning everything. So, you know, and in terms of even if you, you were dating, let's say 10, 20 years ago or whatever, maybe even five, just like communication has changed with the, you know, uh, advent of technology, new platforms, the way people meet, the way people interact. So it's kind of like a relearning experience. And I think it's important to do so because, I mean, you, a person has a type of person they want to attract. So they have to put things out there to, you know, meet the right person or else that's, you know, they're going to find people that they're not necessarily compatible with in terms of kind of the traits that they're looking for and kind of their goals for the future. Exactly. Exactly. And one thing that I always tell my clients is that, like you create a list of all the qualities that you want in another person, in your, in your partner. But your first question should be, how do I become a person that can attract another human being with those qualities? What do I need to develop in myself first to do that? Yeah. And like you said, I think there's stuff that, you know, a person may need to change in themselves in order to, you know, come to a place where they can, give it they're all to a relationship i guess in terms of kind of healing with certain things that they've been through in the past and then 
you know, improve the traits that, you know, you think an, another individual is looking for in return. Because obviously it's not a one way kind of path where, you know, I want X, Y, Z in a partner, but I'm not willing to kind of change or give the same back. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So what motivates you to succeed? One thing that do motivates me to succeed is definitely my self-discipline. I think I'm, I'm really blessed with it because e even when I feel not motivated in the moment, I can, I can, you know, work or do whatever I need to do for maybe 10 or 20 minutes and then momentum kicks in, my self-discipline kicks in and I, I just can't stop going. Yeah, sometimes it's a, you know, it feels like a curse because I, you know, I push myself too hard and I need to know when to stop. But in general, yeah, that's what motivates me to succeed, whatever the circumstances are. Yeah, and I, I mean, oftentimes it is hard to kind of be motivated and, you know, focus 100% of the time. But I think that becomes easier when you kind of develop that habit and obviously an important component of it is having self-discipline or taking yourself out of different you know elements or other habits that are taking away from it obviously human beings have a short attention span and get distracted very easily so putting yourself in an environment that you can focus and kind of recharge once in a while because i mean everybody you know like on social media or everywhere else it looks like people are like gurus or people within industries are super motivated all the time but that's not necessarily the, you know, the case. Oftentimes people will listen to a motivational speaker like on YouTube or online and get like this momentum. And then when they turn the computer off, it just fades away. So having that self-discipline to kind of carry through with whatever you're doing is important. Yeah, there is this old metaphor about the shower. It's like you listen to a motivational speech and you feel great, it's, but it doesn't last, right? In the same way, you take a shower and it doesn't last. You need to take another one in the evening or the next morning. Yeah, I agree. So what's one thing you may have seen as a weakness in yourself in the past that you've turned around and utilized as a strength today? I, I, I guess I could say this is workaholism because I've always been a workaholic and it, it led to, it created a lot of problems for me in my life, especially the one with my divorce, because it was a direct consequence of my being a workaholic. And I, at that point, I expected everyone around me to be workaholics as well, work all the time, be busy all the time. And that was unrealistic. And it caused my wife, you know, to grow resentful and we, we split up. Yeah, but um, now that I am, I am more rational about my workaholism, I see this really as a blessing because I feel happy when I work, even though there is a negative side to it. I can, again, push myself too much in work, but I still, I mean, it's a great source of pleasure, a sustainable one, right? It's not like food or drugs or whatever. It's really, it's really positive. And when I talk to people, there are actually, there are so many people who are unhappy and they tell me like there is, I, I don't feel happiness from anything. And at, at that point, I think, wow, I'm, I am truly blessed for this thing because I can just work and I feel happy. Yeah. That's how I, I turned, you know, I turned it around in the sense. Yeah. That's why I think, yeah, it's, uh, it's both. It's especially, it used to be, it used to be a disadvantage, but now I, I do believe it's a gift. Yeah. yeah. And I think also like the mindset shift as well. So, you know, one thing that could be, negative like you said in the past can often be turned around and you know structured as a positive and you know focused on with a positive mindset and then the whole you know working a lot but enjoying yourself so i mean a lot of people say that work-life balance i don't necessarily think that exists because people say it's 50 50 so you know whenever you do focus on one thing obviously another thing is going to suffer so figuring out what that right balance or formula for you is and your loved ones your friends and family where everybody is happy with in terms of like the interaction and the, you know, the relationship and communication. And I think that that kind of, that's the balance that you're, you know, looking for at the end. 
Right. So you don't have any specific numbers for yourself? I mean, it, it changes, right? It's situational. You know what I mean? Like I said, uh, off offline right now, my schedule, because I've been quarantined, is dictated by my foster kids. So, you know, my conference calls in terms of work, I mean, before this, it didn't really affect this because for four years I've been working remotely anyway. But the component that's been added is, you know, four screaming boys that are in the house 24-7 that, you know, have their own emotional issues because they're coming from abusive situations that they were taking taken away from and figuring out how to, you know, deliver what they're looking for in terms of comfort and love and showing them, you know, care. So, you know, I adapt, I think, and pivot. So, you know, it's not like a hard line where people say, like, this is going to be the most important thing and that's it. It doesn't matter. You know, people have to deal with it around me, you know, my wife, my family, my girlfriend. It, you know, day to day, it often changes day to day. So, and kind of prioritizing, you know, the important things, what, what things are going to really move the needle. So in terms of work, what are kind of the bigger tasks that are going to add the most value? And then what can I either outsource or, you know, delegate out or figure out when they can be done if they don't necessarily have to be done now. So it's, I think it's a constant kind of a balancing act. And by the way, I honor you for your commitment to this foster kids. That, that's beautiful. Yeah, it's 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 definitely rewarding. I mean, it it is hectic. It is it is one of those things. Before we did it, I I, I wouldn't three years ago. I wouldn't think that I would ever be in a situation. But it's one of those things where you know it, it's a scary thing before you do it, and when you do it, you see the rewards of it, and you become kind of good at it, I guess, and you know adapt to it and, and run with it. Yes. So what's one piece of advice you can leave with the audience, personal or professional? We can make a specific. Can you maybe give me like a relationship problem that you know of? And uh, I will give you a tip, for example. I, I know, I know, for example, I, I don't know if you're comfortable talking about this, but uh, I know you, 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 like your parents had sort of challenges in their relationship. Maybe that could be a question. Yeah, well, I mean, my parents' b backstory, I haven't spoken to my dad in 12 years. They got divorced uh, 12 years ago. Um, you know, he cheated on my mom. He was verbally and physically abusive. So um, I think I've handled it well in terms of, like, coming to terms with it as a kid and understanding, like, that's not how I want to be, you know, when I grow up in terms of people around me. But um, I don't know. I, I guess uh, for the listeners, I guess how to, how to cope or get get rid of things that aren't in your control like that like as a child you've seen like you know you know these traumatic things and family relationships and stuff like that and how do you not carry that over into your you know adult relationships or have those impact those relationships well uh, for one thing I, I should tell you that you really did a great job definitely you know by overcoming this and as a more as a practical tip i would say that it's actually a common it's the the theme of our conversation today look for the positive you know whatever is happening to, happening to you so find that gift uh and use it to become a role model for other people to look upon so that you you motivate them so use this as a motivation you don't have to be perfect. Role, role models are not supposed to be perfect, but yeah, you can use you can use that lesson to you know to help others. Yeah, <clears throat> I think that's positive, and I think like the the role model shift with this whole pandemic and um, quarantine, you don't see as much you know in the news about actors or athletes. Now it's kind of shifted to kind of the real heroes, you know, the paramedics, the police, the firefighters the doctors and, and nurses. And I think there's a mind shift, mind shift uh, uh, you know, of thinking now where it's focusing on that. I don't know if, you know, when things technically get back to normal or whatever normal is going to be, if it stays like the priority of what, you know, a hero or a role model is. But uh, I think everybody has that kind of distinction. And I know I've heard a lot of pro athletes in interviews say, you know, don't look at me as a role model. I'm not a role model. But I mean, when you get to a certain amount, you know, of stature or fame, I think it's important to utilize that and, and use it 
as you know leaving a legacy and having impact instead of you know doing xyz i think everybody still has kind of their demons they have to overcome and struggle with addiction and certain things but focusing in on something positive and leaving a legacy with the platform you have yeah exactly and uh i i should add that you know in uh in this in the spider-man movie there was a saying you know with great strength comes a big responsibility yeah that's what you're talking about right yeah even if you don't want it you're thrown into the situation and you know take advantage of it i, I mean i know a lot of athletes are coming from situations that are you know impoverished uh, impoverished you know living conditions uh you know cycles of of violence in terms of their family and seeing a lot of crazy stuff in terms of people you know dying getting killed in their neighborhoods and that stays with them but i mean they don't have to stay in kind of that mindset and taking yourself out i think a lot of people have a loyalty to kind of their community or where they came from and sometimes they feel like you know if they change a mindset or or move on and then they they kind of abandon their original community but i think it's you know imperative that if you can make a positive change you can still change impact people and still care and be there for the people that you kind of you know grew up because that's who the people that made you those kind of variables because if that didn't exist technically everybody would be the same so i mean our experiences in uh life basically make us yeah yeah exactly yeah and yeah you're making a good point about actually giving it back to your community your the place where you came from i love it So I really appreciate you stopping by today. Can you let the audience know how they can find you? Yeah, it's been my pleasure and uh yeah, they everyone can find me through my website which is www.romanmiranov.com and you spell it R O M A N M I R O N O V. Awesome. Thanks again for stopping by. Pleasure, Roman. Thanks for having me. This podcast has been brought to you by Nova Zora Digital. Find out how Nova Zora Digital can help your company grow online. Learn more at NovaZoraDigital.com. Until next time, all you digital savages.